NMN and NR are really popular dietary supplements as of late as tools to support the aging or longevity process. In today's show, we're going to talk about what NMN and NR do and talk about the bigger picture of NAD. And this is the NAD pool. And this very important coenzyme known as NAD actually gets depleted as you age. And so NMN and NR are dietary supplements to help to bolster this very important and critically important coenzyme to your metabolism that may help support longevity and aging. And we want to talk a little bit more about that and lifestyle strategies that you can implement right now to help to bolster this NAD pool so you don't have to be dependent upon these very expensive expensive dietary supplements like NMN and NR. So a great paper that will help you better understand the physiology and the biochemistry, if you are so interested, is titled The Balance Between NAD Biosynthesis and Consumption in Aging. So here is your diet. Here's all the different precursors in your diet and how it goes down to feed the pool of NAD. Now remember, this is a critically important coenzyme that is one of the most important coenzymes in all of metabolism. It turns out it's also involved in detoxification, in antioxidant biosynthesis, as well as DNA repair. So if you have an occupation or a lifestyle that lends itself to increased DNA damage, maybe you work in an aluminum smelter plant, or you're a welder, or maybe you do nails or skincare products, or you're in a hair salon where you're using a lot of chemical carcinogens that would warrant extra DNA repair, you are potentially a candidate for bolstering NAD with nutrition, exercise, possibly dietary supplements, and other interventions like fasting. So we're going to talk about that. But here's figure one, and it goes through the NAD biosynthesis. I know there's some complex medical jargon here, but just let's focus on the big picture. You have your diet, and then you have the different precursors that go on to make NAD. And this is exactly what the dietary supplements are intending to target by offering some of the precursor molecules to bolster the NAD pool, which may help you if you are in, if you have insufficient levels or increased breakdown or utilization of this important coenzyme known as NAD. Now, what you'll see here is you see sirtuins, you see PARPs, which are DNA repair enzymes, and then you also see other ancillary related pathways linked to NAD. But the most important factor impacting the degradation of NAD is actually DNA damage and DNA repair. Now, there's a second critically important factor that helps deplete your NAD pool, and that that is the maintenance of the sirtuin enzymes, which help to maintain your epigenome. We'll define what the epigenome here is very soon. Let's focus back on DNA repair. Again, if you have an occupation or a lifestyle that is you know, sort of sus- lends you to be more susceptible to DNA damage. Or you have genetics, genetic susceptibility, like a BRCA1 gene, for example, or MTHFR genotypes that lend you to insufficient methylation and DNA damage, okay? That would suggest that you should focus on nutrition, diet, and lifestyle strategies that we're going to get into very soon to optimize this, D- this NAD pool. Now, uh, part and parcel with that is the maintenance of the epigenome. We know that as you get older your epigenome starts to have aberrant methylation patterns uh, 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 going on there. And this is characterized now with objective tests known as the epigenetic age tests. There's all sorts of different tests that will tell you your biologic age and tell you if your biologic age, by way of looking at the signatures on your uh, epigenome, if that corroborates with your chronologic age. Sometimes there's a mismatch or sometimes your epigenetic age is actually lower than your biologic age. And so the epigenome, the maintenance of the epigenetic stability and integrity is characterized and and the the sirtuin enzymes are critically involved in that and they utilize a lot of NAD. So this is why a lot of folks that promote longevity science talk about NAD and NMN and NR because it helps support longevity. And so these are the two critically important uh, main buckets where NAD and potentially NAD boosters come into play uh, because again, DNA damage and maintenance of the epigenome. Now, the main pathway to synthesize NAD is known as the salvage pathway that you can see here right on figure one. So that's what we're going to focus on today with nutrition, exercise, and so forth. Now, in figure two, what you see here is as you get older, there's this mismatch between NAD consumption and NAD biosynthesis or production. And you want the the, the balance to favor production versus consumption. Now, again, what clinical conditions are characterized by increased consumption of NAD, DNA damage, accelerated aging, smoking, sedentary activity, alcohol, and the sort. But it turns out that 
Exercise, we're going to talk about very soon, is one of the most important ways to help to bolster the intracellular metabolites and precursors to bolster the NAD pool. Also, going on a lower carb diet or a ketogenic diet, and I can reference a book here in the description below by Travis Christofferson. He talks about the fourth fuel, and this book really focuses on nutritional ketosis and beta hydroxybutyrate and exercise and lifestyle strategies. But it turns out that when you're metabolically healthy, your NAD pool is bolstered. And that book goes into great detail there. I will link it below. I highly recommend all of you, if you're considering spending 60, 70, 100 bucks a month on NMN or NR, you should definitely read this $14 book before you go invest that kind of money. So we have this mismatch here with aging. And I want to share with you some important insights about how exercise specifically increases NAD precursors very soon. But first, I just want to welcome you all back. Hopefully you're enjoying this content. You know what to do if you are. Hit that like button, leave a comment below. And also, also if you want the show notes and links to everything that we're talking about here from a research perspective, I will link that in the description below. Now, since we're talking about exercise, I do want to let you know that at Myoscience, we are coming out with a new unflavored electrolyte sticks that features creatine, taurine, as well as real salt, magnesium, and potassium. There are no additional ingredients, no monk fruit, no stevia, no natural flavors, nothing. This is the purest version and one of the only creatine connecting electrolytes out there that features real salt as well as 2.6 grams of creatine. Now, we're also using in this particular formulation the Crea Pure Micronized Creatine Monohydrate derived from Germany. So you can save using the code podcast over at myoscience.com. So let's get back into how exercise bolsters the NAD pool. And I think this is the most fascinating thing because I recently got a text message from a family member and I can share it with you on the screen. And this is an individual who does exercise to the best of my knowledge. I'm not sure how you know, consistent this person is or I, I don't live with this person, but I know that they are very keen on optimizing longevity, preventing age-related diseases. And they said, hey, look, I, I wanna, you know, what do you think about these NMN supplements? And I've looked at the cost of these supplements. Uh, they're quite expensive. And I think most people should be maximizing everything from an exercise lifestyle standpoint before even considering or prioritizing NMN or NR related supplements because of the cost. We should allocate resources towards exercise bans, gym memberships, personal training, and all of that before even considering some of these very expensive supplements that with all due respect to the supplement companies and some of the emerging research, they're not, the research is not overly compelling that I would prioritize these supplements over exercise. Now, here's what's really interesting about uh, the, the exercise data. It's quite clear that consistent or what's known as chronic or habitual exercise really bolsters this NAD pool. And here's two great papers that I would highly encourage you to check out. Again, I'll link them in the show notes, which will be linked below. The title of this paper is, Can Exercise Prevent the Age-Related Decline in Adaptive Homeostasis? Evidence Across Organisms and Tissues. And so I think what's really interesting is the, the information coming out about how habitual exercise increases all these different intracellular metabolic pathways within the skeletal muscle. And one key pathway is the one that we're talking about today, which is NAD. And they talk about this particular study right here, exercise and aging impact the kind of uranine tryptophan pathway and acylcarnitine metabolite pools in skeletal muscle in older adults. And essentially what this study found is exercise chronically increases quinolinate. I know these are big jargonistic words that are biochemical in nature, but just bear with me here. Quinolinate is a metabolite produced from the initial hydroxylation of kinouranine, which can be used to synthesize NAD. Mechanisms that provide an accumulation of NAD levels are critical for older adults because multi-tissue reductions in NAD is considered a hallmark of aging across species. Now, what these scientists found is there were lower levels of quinolinate in older adults compared to younger adults. However, exercise increases quinolinate within the muscles and presumably within other tissues throughout the body. Now, we know muscle mass mass should be our, our largest tissue by, by weight in the body. So if we can improve the pool of NAD in our muscles, logic would suggest it would probably go to the liver, go to the brain, go to the heart, go to other organs that we want to optimize the, the integrity and metabolic health uh, therein. Now, what's interesting is quinolinate and NAD correlate with VO2 max. And I think that's important. So the, the lower your VO2 max is, which is a proxy for being uh, unconditioned or deconditioned or unphysically fit, that correlates with your NAD pool. So this provides even more impetus for people trying to optimize longevity 
to become more physically fit because the more fit you are, the higher your VO2 max is, possibly the greater your grip strength is, that would correlate with a higher NAD pool. And the scientists say that along with acylcarnitine metabolites, we also observed NAD levels were positively related to VO2 peak and mitochondrial respiration in type 1 muscle fibers. These findings are remarkably similar to a recently studied by Jensen et al., who also saw preservation of NAD levels in older endurance trained athletes with metabolic levels positively associated with cardiorespiratory fitness and mitochondrial bioenergetics. Together, these data suggest that several aspects of mitochondrial metabolism, including acylcarnitine and NAD metabolism, may, may be a possible link between chronic physical activity and mitigation of the decline of cardiorespiratory fitness and mitochondrial energetics in older adults. So, Again, you can spend hundreds of dollars a month on these different supplements and just hope they go, they somehow make it to the right tissue that, that needs it and so forth. Or you can just start walking more. You can start exercising more. You can start lifting more weights, going for hikes and, and walks and cycling and running and swimming on the weekends, which is going to be my preferred way to optimize longevity. Now, if you look at someone, generally speaking, who's been a lifelong athlete, by and large, outside of maybe some skin damage if they exercise outside a lot, they generally look younger, they appear healthier, their brain is more sharp than people who do not chronically or habitually exercise. In fact, if you work with people who are, are working with the chronically ill folks in our society with at, at adult family homes or assisted living facilities, these are people that generally have not been habitually exercising their entire life. So they are deconditioned. They often have diabetes, hypertension, and dementia. These are like the four most common conditions as well as cardiovascular disease. And presumably because they have all of these conditions that are characterized by increased biologic age, they presumably have lower levels of NAD. So it seems like the solutions are right in front of us. Spend hundreds of dollars a month and don't exercise and just hope that these supplements do what they are marketed to do or you start habitually exercising, start walking, uh, commuting by foot or by bike, or even taking public transit because that encourages you to walk more. I think that is really important. But even just an acute bout of exercise will increase your NAD levels. And that's the most important thing to consider here. Now, there are other things that we can talk about uh, with regards to supporting NAD levels and spermidine, cooking with mushrooms. And this was a suggestion that I texted to my family member. I just said, hey, look, you can spend all this money on supplements or you can just start, start buying shiitake mushrooms, oyster mushrooms, yeah, chanterelle mushrooms. There's um, you know all sorts of great mushrooms that you can buy. Uh, science shows that people who consume mushrooms at least once per week uh, have a lower incidence of all different types of cancers compared to people who do not. So from a dietary strategy standpoint, that seems prudent. Also minimizing consumption of processed foods. We know that processed foods and high glycemic index foods and hyperpalatable foods, which was the word I was trying to say there, uh, can increase oxidative stress in your body and that can damage DNA and that can deplete glutathione. And we know that that is not synergistic with optimizing the NAD pool. So just start cooking your food at home from scratch, eating more real unprocessed foods is yet another way. Also compressing your feeding window. Uh, we know various studies have found that Early time-restricted feeding enhances longevity and supports the longevity-associated pathways and presumably also increases NAD as well. There was a study going back to 2019 in June. We've talked about this a lot, finding that early time-restricted feeding with exercise uh, was linked with a greater enhancement of autophagy and all sorts of methylation-related metabolites. And so I think that is really important uh, to also acknowledge. These are other lifestyle factors that we can do. So it's not just these supplements that are going to be the magic cure-all. It is our lifestyle. It is our nutrition. And again, as Travis Christofferson talks about in the book, The Fourth Fuel, that a ketogenic diet, specifically higher levels of beta-hydroxybutyrate, and I might add that habitual exercisers have higher levels of fasting beta-hydroxybutyrate than people who don't exercise as well. So a, a carb-smart diet matching your carbohydrate intake with your level of physical activity might be sufficient to help to optimize this NAD pool as well and thereby support epigenetic integrity and decrease DNA damage. Last but not least, if you do have an occupation that uh, lends itself to increase exposure to these chemical carcinogens, you know, you, you're a welder, for example, or you work in a hair salon or a nail salon, or you do cleaning products or, um, you, you know, things like that, 
it is important to acknowledge that you could increase your glutathione levels and support glutathione with NAC and glycine. We know these are the rate-limiting amino acid precursors to the very important glutathione tripeptide, and it turns out that NAD is involved in glutathione biosynthesis. So uh, supporting glutathione in that way is much more cost-effective than spending hundreds, multiple hundreds of dollars a month on all these longevity supplements. Now, I would just say, uh, you know, David Sinclair is publishing a lot of good research when it comes to longevity. And I remember in 2006 when he, I think it was late 2006, maybe early 2007, when resveratrol was coming out of Sinclair's lab over at Harvard. And I was promoting resveratrol to everyone I knew, my friends, my family, I was taking it myself. And I can't tell you if, if I experienced any benefit from that. So I get excited about these novel ingredients just like anyone else does. But I have since learned over the past 18 or so years that lifestyle matters much more than some of these products. Um, and especially when they're really expensive. Um, and so those are just my thoughts. Going back to the basics, that money can be better used towards healthy food, gym memberships, exercise, things like that. Th th those are just my thoughts. Now, um, we have talked about NMN and NR on the, on the YouTube channel. I have received various comments from people who said that they uh, have noticed better sleep improvements when they take these uh, different compounds uh, and improvements in energy and, and suppression of appetite. So I know there are anecdotal reports and people find benefit, but again, I strongly suggest that you focus on the lifestyle strategies because we know unequivocally that exercise nutrition increases the NAD pool. So that's what I would suggest to you. So hopefully you found this information helpful. Thanks as always for tuning all the way in. We'll catch you on a future one down the road.